Welcome back everyone to another Space News Rundown with me. We've got lots to talk about regarding SpaceX's Starship, human spaceflight and so much more. So let's not waste any time beginning the video and we'll start off once again as always with everything related to Starship that happened last week. The week began with some pretty stormy weather, but luckily both Booster 4 and Ship 20 emerged looking pretty unscathed. While the bad weather was likely a big contributor to last week's slightly slower pace for SpaceX, it does give SpaceX a good perspective on any changes that might need to be made to the Boca Chica site in the face of any bad weather. We have seen a couple of stormy spells at the launch site, but so far we're yet to see any horrific weather conditions like hurricanes or just really bad storms. But being on the Gulf of Mexico, it's likely only really a matter of time before something big hits the site, so hopefully times like these will help inform SpaceX of any changes that need to be made. SpaceX announced that they hoped to be testing Booster 4 on the 17th of September, though sadly, of course, this didn't happen. However, given that Elon was optimistic about a static fire happening last week, hopefully that means that the odds are very high for us seeing one early this week, possibly even today, as September the 20th, and tomorrow, September the 21st, are the backup dates for the initial September the the 17th testing window. It's not yet clear if Ship 20 or Booster 4 will be tested first, but I'm sure regardless of which one it is, it'll definitely be a great spectacle as always. SpaceX also have a new test window for the 22nd of September with backup dates on the 23rd and 24th. These are road closures, so aren't necessarily going to represent when SpaceX will be lighting the candle on Booster 4 or Ship 20. The closures could simply be to give SpaceX room to transfer stuff like GSE Tank 8 down to the tank farm, but possible tests to look forward to include proof testing of Ship 20, Booster 4 testing and static fire, or probably less likely, a static fire for Ship 20. One of the biggest developments we saw last week was the completion of Ship 20's heat shield tiles. For the past few weeks, we've been seeing engineers working tirelessly on the tiles, particularly around the nose. Following the initial fit test of the booster and Ship 20, several tiles were damaged and needed to be either entirely replaced or just realigned. Problem tiles were marked with either green or red tags, red indicating a need for replacement and green indicating a need for realignment. But now, look! Nary a tag in sight. Hopefully the tiles won't be damaged during the ship's testing campaign, or of course during the lift when it comes to stacking the rocket again before launch. The only patches left for SpaceX to do are these gaps here, which are currently occupied by the lifting points used to hoist the rocket by crane, which of course will need to be removed and filled in before the launch. Remaining on the subject of Ship 20, the vehicle has now received all of its sea level Raptors. So again, hopefully a static fire is on the cards reasonably soon. Of course, stage Stage 0 is just as important as Stage 1, Booster 4, and Stage 2, Ship 20. For those that don't know, Stage 0 represents all the infrastructure required to support a Starship orbital launch, including the launch tower, quick disconnect arm, launch table, and the tank farm. The tank farm is where all the propellants for the rocket are stored before they're pumped into the vehicle for flight, and we've seen good progress on this part of Stage 0 this week. Firstly, GSE Tank 8 is now fully stacked inside the midbay, which is big news as this is the final tank that's required. We've also seen substantial progress on the propellant lines that connect the launch pad to the tank farm, and now we're expecting SpaceX to begin working on extending the large protective berm, this dirt wall thing, which shields the tank farm from the fiery launch zone. One more final note on Starship vehicles, Ship 22 and Booster 5 are being worked on, and progress is coming along nicely. Elon has teased us that Booster 5 will hopefully be the first Super Heavy to land in the giant Mechazilla catching arms of the launch tower, so that launch will definitely be a very exciting one to watch. As you are probably aware, Booster 4 and Ship 20 will just be soft landings in the ocean for their flights, given that the main purpose of the first fully stacked orbital Starship launch is to make sure that all the systems work and that the rocket can, you know, actually get to space. And hopefully also prove that Ship 20 has what it takes to withstand the insanity of orbital re-entry. Do you think Ship 20 will make it all the way or will it break up during the extreme Mach 25 conditions? Let me know your thoughts down below and hey while you're down there you know I gotta shamelessly ask you to like and if you're really enjoying the content subscribing as well so that you get notified of when I publish these videos every single Monday so you can start your week off correctly. <laughs> anyway I've been dancing around arguably the biggest Starship related news that we had this week and that is that the FAA has finally published their draft report for full stack Starship 
ship operations. Interestingly, the document here only allows for five operational Super Heavy launches per year, though bear in mind it also allows for three full stack launches during the development phase, meaning that next year could potentially see up to eight launches if SpaceX can successfully transition from the development phase to the operational phase. I'm sure that this document will end up seeing revisions and amendments as Starship development continues. The paperwork here was actually submitted by SpaceX about a year ago. That was before SN15 had flown and landed, and of course a lot has changed since then. Another error in the document is that it states that Super Heavy will have up to 37 Raptor engines, which was quickly corrected by Elon, who noted that it should in fact read 33. Currently, the document is undergoing a 30-day comment period, which Elon has encouraged people to contribute to. Friends and partners of the show, Austin Barnard and C. Nunez Images, both residents of Brownsville, Texas, have already expressed their support of SpaceX's goals, and if you're a resident of the United States, then I encourage you to leave some feedback as well. The comment window closes on the 18th of October, but after this, it's not like SpaceX can then immediately light the engines and send it. After the window closes, the FAA will need to work with SpaceX to address all the comments and concerns from the public comment period and make any revisions or amendments as necessary. How long this will take is unknown. Could be a few days, could take months. And even after this is done, SpaceX will then need to apply for the launch license itself. And I'm not really sure how long this process would take. Therefore, I wouldn't really expect to see the full stack Starship launch take place any earlier than late November, but even that's a pretty optimistic prediction. My heart hopes for November, but my brain reckons we're probably looking at early 2022. Which begs the question of what will happen first? Orbital Starship launch or Artemis 1? It's kind of funny that Artemis 1 was initially meant to fly in 2016, which was the same year that SpaceX announced that they were planning on making a bigger rocket. At the time, it wasn't even called Starship. Crazy how fast SpaceX move. Anyway, what do you think will happen first? Starship or SLS? Let me know down below. I'll give you a moment before I roll the transition to the next part of the video where I talk about everything else we saw last week. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, you can type faster than that. Oh, nice. Oh, is that Cherry MX Blue? Oh, that's very nice. I've got I've got Cherry MX Brown myself because I'm a gamer, you know. Anyway, that's probably enough time. <laughs> So yes, the first launch we saw last week was on the 14th of September, where we saw 51 Starlink satellites launch into low Earth orbit aboard a Falcon 9 from the Vandenberg Space Force base. Kinda. If you squint really hard through the fog, I can assure you that it's definitely there. <laughs> the first stage successfully landed 640 kilometers downrange on the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship, making this the 100th successful Falcon mission in a row. Another record for this mission was that the Starlink satellites were deployed into a 70 degree orbital inclination, making this the first launch into a high inclination non-SSO orbit, the first launch of the third Starlink shell. Shell number three will significantly increase the Starlink coverage area, boosting the constellation's coverage to around 94% of the Earth's surface. I'm looking forward to watching SpaceX continue to fill the third shell up, hopefully with the same level of success from last week's mission, but perhaps with slightly less fog in the way. <laughs> On the same day as Starlink, one of its competitors launched. We saw 34 OneWeb satellites launch into low Earth orbit aboard a Soyuz 2.1b from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. OneWeb will provide global satellite and and broadband services, and they currently have 322 satellites in orbit, and there are four more launches planned to complete the constellation. These four launches will carry another 138 satellites between them. If everything goes smoothly, the OneWeb constellation will be complete by early 2022. Best of luck to OneWeb there. We round last week's news off with what was probably the most exciting launch of them all, the Inspiration4 launch. On the 16th of September, the crew successfully launched inside their modified Dragon capsule atop a Falcon 9 from the Kennedy Space Center. This is the first ever orbital flight to have an all-civilian crew, captained by Jared Isaacman, the billionaire businessman, pilot, and funder of the flight, who's also an accomplished jet pilot. Holding several world records, the most prominent of which include two speed around the world flights in 2008 and 2009, which raised money and awareness for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. For Inspiration4, he funded two tickets on behalf of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, and one of them was given to Hayley Arsenault, a physician assistant at 
at the hospital and a former patient of theirs. She was treated for bone cancer there as a child, and for this mission she served as the dragon's medical officer. She gave some very heartwarming words to the current patients of St. Jude's via video call, saying that if I can do this, you can do this, and I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Also on board was mission specialist Chris Sembrowski, an Air Force veteran and Lockheed Martin employee who won one of the seats in an online contest, and finally there was the Dragon Capsule's pilot Cyan Proctor, a geoscientist who was a NASA astronaut candidate herself. During a Q&A session with some of the patients of St. Jude's, one of the children asked, are there cows on the moon? No. To which Proctor laughed and replied that I hope that there will be one day, which I interpret to be a very serious statement on how SpaceX planned to proceed with future crewed missions, and I personally can't wait to see some cattle being transported to the moon on the Lunar Starship. Not sure why no one else is talking about this though. This is huge news, right? I, am I breaking this? Anyway, we've got some awesome shots of the crew enjoying the incredible views out of the Dragon's Glass Dome, which was fitted in place of the docking port, which obviously wasn't required for this mission since no space station docking was to be performed. Interestingly, making this the first mission to carry humans to space without visiting a space station since the most recent Hubble servicing mission, which was over a decade ago. After spending three days orbiting the Earth, Dragon and the Inspiration4 crew successfully safely splashed down off the coast of Florida on Saturday, September the 18th, completing their multi-day low Earth orbit mission. Big congratulations to the crew and to SpaceX on this achievement. Inspiration4 weren't the only people to re-enter the atmosphere last week though. We also saw the return of the Shenzhou 12 crew one day prior on the 17th of September. Astronauts Nai Haisheng, Leo Boeming and Tang Hongbo, I'm really sorry for my presumably horrible pronunciation of those names, landed successfully at the Dongfeng landing site in northern China, bringing an end to the first crewed mission to China's newly established space station. Not wanting to put the brakes on anytime soon though, China have already begun preparations for the next launch to the station. A long March 7 will be sending a Tianzhou class cargo spacecraft to dock with the station today. But to discuss this any further, I'll need to roll the transition to the final segment of the show, so let's quickly do that. Yes, as I just mentioned, today we'll see a Long March 7 launch the Tianzhou 3 unmanned cargo spacecraft to the Tiangong space station and will be the second cargo resupply mission to the station. Here's some shots of the rocket all ready to go down at the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center. And that's it. <laughs> it's actually the only orbital flight we're expecting to see this week. Although hopefully, like I said in the Starship segment, we should see lots of cool things like static fires happening down at Texas. So it's not like we won't have anything else to look forward to this week, but that that's it. That's the end of my video. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Bit of a rough transition there, but if you enjoyed the video, then again, do remember to leave a little like down below. It really helps me to survive the tireless tides of the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to support me further on Patreon, you can do so like these lovely folk on the left uh, chose to do. You can click on the link in the description or via the on-screen link. You could also join the channel, get some cool emojis, a badge next to your name. You guys know the drill by now. There's two video suggestions on screen from my channel that hopefully you'll enjoy and that's it guys and again you know sls or starship that's the big one on everyone's minds there's gonna be i'm assuming there's sls footage in the background which is blocked by the end screen so that's not very didn't really think that one through anyway that's it bye